everyone, Nicole van der Hooven here. It's still day one of my new job with K6. And the first thing I wanna do is choose like the happy path, the easiest way to run a load test, because I think that's actually the most important part. Um, a lot of people uh, struggle with the scripting portion of it. So I wanna see how well K6 handles that. As you can see, this is my brand new account. I don't have any tests created. Looks like you can do test builder or script editor. I think we'll do test builder for now, just to choose the easiest way. All right, uh, test builder. Looks like we can set the, the config here for like how many numbers of virtual users, but I'll just um, rename this first. Oh, that's kind of cool. You can upload a HAR file. Oops. All right, let's change this to something smaller since this is just a test, looks like uh, virtual users. 10 should be fine. Uh, I think this is AWS availability regions too. So that's good. We'll choose Sydney. There's no Melbourne. Ramping profile. Okay, they, they have like some predetermined kind of um, profiles here. I wonder if you can kind of edit what's in them. Uh, it doesn't look like it though. Ooh, thresholds. I think this is really cool. This is something I really don't see much at all in like online uh, load testing platforms. I'm not sure if it should be less than or Great, I'm gonna choose greater than because there's a stop test there. Okay, that, let's just say a min, a second. Um, it'll probably be less than that, but anyway, I really like how there's so many more um, options here other than just response time for threshold. We'll do utilization for now, um, but I would, if, if I were doing this for real, I would do a lot more of these thresholds because they're so cool. 90 would be good. Um, you want to make sure that your resource utilization is not higher than a certain um, percentage because otherwise you're not really load testing your application, you're load testing your load generators. So I just want to make sure, uh, I want to check what that test, doc, test site is. Um, okay, just making sure that it's an actual K6 one before I, you know, actually load test it. I'm gonna do this um, news, yeah. I'm gonna copy this URL so that I can test it too. Okay, ooh, add sleep. I'd prefer, I'd prefer if it had said think time, but. Okay, so I guess this is like a, a step. So I'm gonna go to the home page and then the news page. And then there's a, a think time in between of two seconds. So this is also really cool that you can just put the headers in and the parameters. Uh, looks like you can even put m assertions in checks and variables. That's, that's pretty unusual for a test builder type of interface to also be able to set variables. Um, it just adds to the, the flexibility of your test when you don't have to use the same static values all the time. I do wish that you, oh, okay, you can change the sleep value. All right, make it one second. I like that you can, instead of the builder, you can actually just view the script directly here um, so that the whatever you're doing in the test builder is obviously directly tied to the actual script. So I wonder if you could, yeah, it looks like you can even, yeah, you can edit the script here. Um, which is really good because that means you don't have to be tied to your local machine where you know all your scripts are. If you had to, you could just um, edit whatever you wanted here in, in this little script editor, which is pretty awesome. We'll definitely try that later as well. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of do the happy path for now. So we'll do the test builder. Uh, where's the run? How do you... Okay, it's up at the top here. All right, this is my first run. Ooh. 
this looks cool. Um, this little animation thing is such a simple thing, right? But it's just, this is why I love cloud platforms so much because instead of like, I, I still remember starting with load testing and having to go to ev log into every single jump box or load generator that, that I was using and making sure that, you know, I, I would start it. Um, and then of course, later you develop scripts to do that, but you still kind of want to check that everything's working okay with with k6 and with other cloud um, cloud based load testing just kind of does all of that for you so you don't even see that those machines are being provisioned in the cloud that was actually kind of fast um in my experience virtual machines in amazon take actually a, a bit longer than that before they start running this is probably just one virtual machine because it's just 10 users but that's still pretty fast because that was like what was that was that like 10 seconds or something or maybe i was just talking too long all right this is oh that's cool that there's um scripts there logs all right waiting for logs so that is in beta though so i'm not actually sure if it's working and i think that if you run K6 just on your local machine. Of course, you'll be, you'll be able to see the logs that way. Um, all right, so the requests are already coming through. What have we got here? Requests made, active views, requests per second, average response time, which is just 199 milliseconds. Well, it was just 10 users, so we're not actually load testing here. But that's pretty cool that it looks like this graph is updating in real time, which is really essential because the last thing you want to do is run your test and then be blind for the entirety of its duration. You want to know right away whether there are failures or any performance issues because that might just be a, a, a bottleneck that you could, have, you could have identified at the start of your test. So let's look at HTTP here. All right, these are the requests, the two pages that I'm going to, and we can see the HTTP response code. It's been 200 so far and the total count of the test so far. I, I like that there's the response times that aren't just an average as well as you can see standard deviation and I think these are um, percentile response times. So it's always hard to just trust one number for your metrics. It's much better to see the spread. It looks like you can also add, okay, you can add the CPU utilization. Wow, this is during the test. So many people um, forget to look at the memory and CPU utilization of the load generator during the test because um, otherwise you might get really funky results. There's actually a lot here that you can add. There's a lot to customize. And you can have more than one graph, looks like. Even TLS handshake is, is in here. Some gauge metrics. Oh, just, yeah, okay, just a separate graph. Uh, this is kind of cool to be able to have some, it's like a, like a custom dashboard that updates in real time. This is, again, unusual for for something that you can just run on your on a web browser, you know. Normally each of these would require you going into the machine and then setting up perfmon or or whatever uh, depending on the operating system of course. But this just happens with with the test while it's running and you don't have to prepare it beforehand, which you would normally have to do in the old way of load testing. So I've just forwarded a bit here just to, you know, get to the end of the test. The test was marked as failed. And I think that I actually misunderstood the thresholds because I thought that it was the conditions for a test failing, but it was actually the conditions for it passing. So the condition that I put was that the response time would be greater than or equal to one second and that the CPU utilization would be greater than or equal to 90% but it was actually, that would have been unhealthy if that had happened, 
but um, it was way below that on both counts. So all in all, I have good first impressions of the application and the general interface. It was really easy to, to figure things out. Um, I really like that it doesn't, I think it strikes the balance between um, kind of making things easy and accessible for people who may not necessarily be scripters or programmers, um, and while also not like severely hampering uh, the flexibility that K6 can provide. So I like that there's a test builder so that you don't have to script if you don't want to, but there is also like a script builder kind of interface there, so you can just use that. I think with, with load testing, a lot of the times there's, a, there's way too much importance placed on the scripting and the techniques and learning, you know, a new tool, but that part should actually ideally just be trivial. Then you can focus on the important things of a load test, which is why are you running the load test in the first place and how will you know if that load test passes or fails? which is why I love the thresholds, even though um, I kind of made a, a mistake on it, now I know to flip it. And tomorrow I'm definitely going to test that assumption that I can flip it and it'll be, it'll work as I wanted it to so that the conditions are going to set what's acceptable for my test, like a, like a service level agreement. See you on day two.